Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. To all of you gathered here in person, to all of you gathered online to Granite Falls Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Paul Dries. I serve as associate pastor here. Pastor Mark is the senior pastor here. We don't do announcements at the front anymore, so we're just going to jump right into it. I would invite you to rise for our gathering hymn, All Creatures Worship God Most High, verses 1 through 4, number 835.
continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. of victory for our God, hallelujah. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength despair, 
Popo, grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is from Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed they were at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. The psalm for today am I too close? The psalm for today is Psalm one forty eight. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, and all cattle, creeping things and flying bird. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed is old body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. That's the ending of the lessons. 
Please rise. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life. Alleluia. In our Old Testament lesson, we, we saw that story of about how uh, Joseph, who had every right to take revenge upon his brothers who had treated him horribly, had the power to do so, did not. He showed mercy. And he came to understand that that mercy was part of God's plan. Now we hear Jesus speaking in the same vein. But, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer your other also. And from anyone, who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is it that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you have a hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But, love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge and you'll not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Given and will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put in your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Here ends our gospel reading. Please be seated. Kids, come on up. We don't have too many of you today, but I still nonetheless lead you today. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, it's just a three, four, ah, uh, we have some more here. Good, good. I, uh, I brought this, I brought this, I brought this. Our last, our last, very last thing that Jesus says, maybe it doesn't seem to make any sense until we think about it a little bit. And uh, so I'm putting this on, I'm putting this on. The last thing that Jesus says is a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Um, if we're going to, we're doing some uh, cooking or food or something like that, or we go to the store and we're uh, maybe getting some, um, some loose stuff, maybe candy, I don't know, whatever, how much can you put in one hand? Not too much, right? How much can you put in? Right? Yeah. And this is what they're saying. They're saying, Jesus says this, a good measure, and you really want it, if you really want to get something in, right, in a jar or in a bag, you shove it down in there so there's room for more, right? And, uh, um, and you shake it a little bit too to make sure there's no just air down in there. Running, and you make sure it goes all the way up to the top, right? So, and you keep filling it until it starts to spill over the edge, right? And you place it not in your hands, but in your lap. How much stuff could I get in here? A lot, couldn't I? And it would be shaken, it would be pressed down, and they would just keep filling it till it was, till it was coming over the edge, right? It was coming over the edge. And this is, this is Jesus' way of talking about our forgiveness. God doesn't forgive us just a little, or even that much. 
God gives and forgives us and loves us this much to the point where it's running over the edges. More than we could even, more than we could put in our hands by ourselves. And Jesus, God loves us that much. Let's, let's pray. Our lives are running over. We even say in a, that, that our cup runs over. And your love for us and, f- and, and for these, these young people is immense, more than we can handle. But luckily, you have given us to the point of overflowing love. Help us to know it. And then what we do is, is we share what we have been given to the point where Jesus comes right back and keeps filling it over and over again with forgiveness and love. Amen. Thanks for coming up. I guess I'm going to keep this on, right? We'll talk about this. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our God is not. Our God is not a just God. Now the rest of the sermon here is going to be unpacking that. A God is not a just God by our measures. This past week uh, in Minnesota, if you watched the trial of Kim Potter unfold, waiting sentencing, um, she was sentenced, if you weren't aware, to, to two years on a first degree man, first degree manslaughter charge. This was underneath what a regular sentencing guideline would be. It was lower than. There are those who would say, this is unjust. Um, There are those that that pressed for longer than sentencing guidelines she should be in jail. There are those who are happy with the verdict, given the circumstances uh, of her life. She has no um, history of criminal activity, or record, or anything like that, uh, and, and has generally, um, as a police officer, had a, a, a remarkable um, a career as a police officer. And yet the voices out there are a variety demanding a variety of forms of justice. Some were happy, some were not. And then there was some, there, there are those people of, who, for whom um, this will be something which sticks with them. And, and obviously, uh, uh, the man who was killed will stick with them. For they've lost someone that they love. Um, hurt deeply, life changed. And, and you know what they've stated? We're never just, we're not going to forgive this person. We're not going to forgive Kim Potter for what she did. I, I follow it with such interest, you see, because uh, 25 years ago, my mom and dad, as they were, as they were returning from v- visiting us in Sabika on the way home from Fergus Falls, uh, abruptly crossed the center line and struck on uh, head-on another car coming. My mom was driving. In this accident, the other, the, the young woman was killed. Her husband was in jail in another state, and there were two orphans left. They were not with her in the accident. In the state of Minnesota, crossing over the center line and results, uh, when it results in the death of another person, it's automatically a criminal trial. In this instance, a gross misdemeanor. And so my mom, when she got out of uh, the hospital and then the nursing home, a trial was scheduled. Uh, and she was, she was convicted, of a, convicted of a gross misdemeanor. And that was the criminal trial. The other uh, party, the other families, this would be the parents of uh, the grandparents of the children, pressed for jail time for my mom, 65 years old. Um, no record, uh, no, crim- no uh, traffic offenses even. Pressed for jail time for her. That's what they wanted. They did not get that. She received um, probation, supervised probation, and community service. 
The year later, there was a, the civil trial in which they um, uh, pressed for uh, as much as they could uh, damages uh, uh, in, in the form of cash compensation, and they did not get um, nearly as much as I think they thought they were going to get or wanted. We never know, we never figured out why suddenly, my mom has no recollection, she's since passed away, why they suddenly crossed over the center and we have no idea. It's what you call an accident, I guess, when you're driving. There's a justice which is uh, civil. Um, if you do this, this will happen. That'll be your penalty. It's been set up beforehand. There is a justice which is restorative and tries to repair things. You know, when you have the death of another person, you can't bring them back from the dead. That, that would be, the, that would be what, the ideal thing, but sometimes you don't have that option. There's a justice which is punishing and punitive. That's where the word kind of punishment comes from. Punitive, it, 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 it seeks to, um, to, to make a person um, over and, and above what uh, they might be able to restore uh, um, or, or give back and repair or make amends with. In the Old Testament, of course, there was a sort of a blood vengeance. If you kill one person from my clan or tribe, then we will kill three from yours. You know, even nowadays we have sort of a sense of that where we have capital punishment um, right? We say that, you know, if somebody commits this, they will be put to death. We, and we kind of think of that as a deterrent, maybe. There's also a justice which tries to be godly, too, and Jesus starts to speak to this. But remember, God is unjust. What does Jesus say to me? He says that we're supposed to love our enemies. It says we're supposed to bless those who who offer us injury. That we're even supposed to offer ourselves up for even more abuse should that circumstance happen. That we should give to those who have nothing, whether they deserve it or not. And then Jesus, I, I, I interpret it this way, Jesus steps back and he says this, do to others as you would have them do to you. Now I want to stop here just a second. When we say that, okay, I don't think, because everything he says before that, everything he says after that, doesn't support that. He says, this is the way the world says, right? Do unto others as you would have them do to them. And then, he, and then he says, right? Right? I mean, you love the people who love you, right? You lend to the people who will give you in return, right? Do unto the others as you want to have them do to you. Forgive the people that you expect to forgive you, right? That's the way that the world operates. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? I for an eye, two for a tooth. That's the way that the world operates. That's their form of justice. And then the word in verse 35 rolls back in front of us again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. Love, do good, lend to others. Be unjust and show mercy and have mercy. Your Father's not just, but merciful, Jesus says. Your Father in heaven has not judged you justly, but mercifully. I mean, if we're judged justly, if we are honest, we are surely condemned. We cannot forget that. When we cry for justice, too often it's mostly for ourselves. Or for, but when, when we recognize fully that we are the ones who have received the mercy and change. God's mercy saves us, not God's justice. We're to be merciful in our justice because that is exactly what we receive. Not justice, but mercy. Shirley Vile, God bless her, one of my former parishioners, dealt with this even more closely. Shirley Vile, one of the one of the matriarchs of my congregation, had a son who was killed in a random act of violence.
As she went through that circumstance of dealing with that, she came to understand. She came to understand something very important that we all have to understand. I'm going to tell it to you. If you haven't heard it, I want it to stick in your mind. Because it's stuck in mind regarding justice. She said, carrying around your hate, carrying around your anger is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. I want to repeat that to you because I hope that you know, whatever you remember from today, that sticks with you. Carrying around hate and anger in, in, a, in a circumstance like this. Carrying around hate and anger is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. She gave forgiveness to the man who killed her son. She gave forgiveness to them because she knew what she had received. And so then, Jesus asks us to give what we have received. To give, to give, right? Give for. Give forgiveness what we have received. Give mercy. Give things even, financial things, possessions to others. Give your life to God and to others. Give everything you are, everything you have. Give your all. Justice is, is, is not a command. Mercy is not a command or a law, but a life and a love of God and the other people around you. Justice is not so much what you give, but what you have not received. Because thankfully God is not just, but God is merciful, gracious, abounding in steadfast love. The unjust, you and I have been made just in Jesus Christ to live and be merciful to others. We gather here today then to be reconciled by that one fact. On the cross, Jesus made us just. The unjust people. You and I received and were made just. That's why we call it justification. The one who is just, God, the one who is just, Jesus, makes the people who are condemned to be justified, to be loved. Out of God's mercy, not our goodness. Out of Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection, not our ability to be perfect or, or to, to act in a perfectly just way. We follow Him, you see, because of what we've received. Mercy. Love. His life for ours. Let's pray then in that vein and in His name. Gracious Lord God, You have bought us. And we pursue, we pursue justice because, precisely because we have not received it. We've received mercy. And because we've received mercy, we've, we've received an apron full, it's pouring out or, uh, over the edges. We, we give and we share that mercy with others. That becomes who we are. We claim a justice which comes from being forgiven, not because we are so incredibly just. We claim and we pursue a justice which, which issues from the mercy of God and Jesus Christ for us as we become and we act with mercy toward those around us. And in this bread and in this wine we are remaining, we can see and taste and touch the goodness of God and the forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, our brother and God, our Father, Amen. Now let's sing together a song. We, you know, we started with um, our first hymn, which kind of is keyed toward this uh, idea that God is wonderful, God is incredible and awesome. And now we move to a song um, which, is, which, is, which encapsulates what Jesus is talking about. The goodness and, and the love of God in Christ is stronger than anything out there. It's hymn number 721, You May Remain Seated.
we continue with the Apostles' Creed, please stay seated. I know, I kind of threw you off there, my apologies. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so that we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. Holy God, you teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your Church to follow the leading of your love especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. Merciful God. into this situation. Merciful God. She recently passed away yesterday. 
We lift up the friends and family of Jesse, a ninth grader who recently passed away. We pray that your compassion would get to the depths of the pain. We pray that you might use us to be merciful in those situations, that we might be able to support those that we love, and that we might be able to turn to you and turn to your embrace in our grief. God, we pray for healing for all of those that we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. God of mercy, help us to live with mercy. Help us to live with compassion and generosity towards all people, especially those in pain. Merciful God. such great hope in your promises, O God. We lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We continue with collecting our tithes and offerings as we sing together Lord of Light, verses 1 and 2, number 688. Thanksgiving, I would invite you to rise as it is comfortable for you.
indeed right hard to hoot here and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this in remembrance of me. Every time we eat of this bread and we drink of this wine, we confess Christ resurrected until Christ comes once again. And as they prayed on that night, I invite us to join together in praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We practice open communion here at Granite Falls Lutheran Church, so all are welcome to come and receive communion. I invite our communion service to come forward, and I would invite you all to sing, Forgive Our Sins as We Forgive, number 605. The words will also be on the screens.
we continue with our post-communion prayer. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring forth good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I would invite you to rise as it is comfortable for you as we sing together thanksful hearts and voices raised number 205. seated as we share our announcements today. We have some good news, some bad news. For those of you that didn't hear, Sharon Krogstead passed away yesterday, and so we would just encourage you to share prayers for her family and to show compassion in any way that you can. And also continuing in that, we know that there's a ninth grader who recently died Jesse Smith was his name. And so prayers for the Smith family and for all of those ninth graders that were in his class. So you might also notice that Pastor Mark is no longer here. And that is not an accident. He did not dislike my prayers so much that he decided to leave. He is actually at Yellow Medicine Lutheran Church. So we agreed to help out with pulpit supply there for today. And there's also an ongoing conversation about sharing pastor, uh, entering into a pastoral service agreement. You all should have received an email. There's also paper copies available in the office during office hours. If you would like to stop back or like to learn more about that, we'll be doing a special congregational meeting on March 13th. We all have confirmation this next week. We're going to be doing a noisy offering on February 27th, which the proceeds of which will go to benefit those who are affected by or tornadoes, you can see on the back there of our announcements. We will be going on a ski trip tomorrow with the youth, so we're excited about that. We've got Green Lake Bible Camp, you can still register for that. The Boundary Water Strip, you can still register for that. We've got adult education that's going to be happening and a senior high youth gathering. That is from April 1st and 2nd at Luther Crest Bible Camp. You can read more details about that. Oh, in March 13th, is going to be Camp Sunday. So we're going to have Travis, the Executive Director of Green Lake Lutheran Ministries. He's going to come and speak with us for a little bit and then hang around for a little bit afterwards. With that all being said, I would invite you to rise as it is comfortable for you for the benediction. May God bless you with mercy so that you might be merciful to others. May God bless you with overwhelming love so that you might show compassion to others. May God provide you peace so that you could be a beacon of peace to others in troubled times. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.